Welcome to Lab Rads. Today, we're gonna to be exploring the science behind flying. Humans have always known that flying is possible because we observed the birds flying around us. But it wasn't until 1903 when the Wright brothers finally were able to invent and build the first plane that was able to sustain human flight. The Wright brothers and many others have helped humanity better understand the science of flight why and how things fly by observing the birds and nature around us. The act of observing nature and understanding or building something off of it is actually a field called biomimicry. By looking and observing nature, you can actually understand better and maybe even use those features to build something amazing for us today. A great place to start if you want to be an inventor is observe the natural world around you. Let's take a look at how flying actually works. What's the science behind flying? Well here, we talk a lot about forces. Anytime something's moving, there must have been a force that was applied to it. So on Earth, we all experience this force of gravity that's sticking us to the ground. If I jump, I fall right back down. A bird or a plane flying in the sky, they experience gravity too. So why aren't they crashing back to the ground? Well, they must be experiencing a force that keeps them up in the air. And that force is called lift. If you wanna experience this lift force for yourself, next time you're in your car, roll down your windows and stick your arm out. Feel the wind going past your arm over your hand. So as you duck down, you'll feel it push down. As you lift your angle up, you'll feel the air push you way up. That pushing up is force of lift. Remember, if we understand how this world works around us, we can control it. So how can we better control this force of lift? Let's do an experiment. We're gonna need a bendy straw and a ping pong ball. All you're gonna do is take your bendy straw into a 90 degree angle. You want it pointing straight up. Then you take your ping pong ball. I want you to see if you can levitate this ping pong ball over this straw using just your breath. Wow, it didn't seem to fall anywhere. It just levitated right over my straw. Let's try it again. Why didn't the ping pong ball fall away from the air? So the air my, of my breath was pushing it up. That makes sense. You can feel the air pushing on your hand when you breathe out. There's a force there. But why wasn't it blowing up and out and around like a fountain would? So fast moving air and slow moving air have very different qualities. There's a simple experiment we can do to see what different properties they might have. And all you're gonna need for that is some paper. To look at the different properties of fast or slow moving air, you're just gonna need a couple of strips of paper. So I'm gonna hold up the paper like this and I'm gonna blow in between them. My question to you is, what do you think will happen? Do you think they will blow out? Do you think they will blow, uh, stay right where they are? Or do you think they'll blow in? Well, let's do the experiment. Hmm, they seem to fall in. Let's try it again. That's definitely pushing together. We can do it again just with one piece of paper. If I pulled this out like this, obviously it's pulling down with gravity. If I blow over the top, do you think it will push down? Do you think it'll stay where it is or lift up? Well, it clearly lifted up. Think about air applying a pressure. All this air is, is weight, it does have force, it applies a pressure. Fast moving air, the force looks like it's pointing towards where the air is moving. That means that that fast moving air must have less pressure than the slow moving air around it. And that's what we call Bernoulli's principle. Anytime a liquid or a gas is moving very quickly, it will have less pressure than the slower moving liquid or gas. So now that we've taken a look at Bernoulli's principle and seen this different effects of, of pressure when you have fast or slow moving air, I wanna teach you how you can use that to make the most annoying sound in the world. <coughs> what I want you to do is if, you're, if you ever need to wake up your dad, go grab a couple of aluminum cans, just like this, couple of soda cans. Next, you need a straw. And when you make this annoying noise and you wake him up, wakes up in that angry, ah, oh, what's going on? Tell him it's because of science. So for this, all you're gonna do is hold this gently, lightly in your hands. You don't wanna squeeze them together. You want them to just be sort of resting on your straw and you're gonna blow probably about a quarter of the way down. So 25% up, you want it below the halfway point. And then I'm gonna blow really, really hard. 
Wow, that is a loud noise. Most annoying noise in the world. Humans originally built these plane wings to look like bird wings. But now, as we better understand the science behind this lift, now plane wings look like this. They have a bit of a teardrop shape and they have uh, a bit bigger bulge on the top than they do on the bottom. What that does is increase the path length, the amount of, of distance the air on top has to travel than the air on bottom. That actually makes it move faster. So the faster moving air on top and slower moving air below. As we said with these previous experiments, Bernoulli's principle states that that means that there's less pressure on top than on bottom, so there's a force up. That's the force of lift that we're talking about. That simple force of changing the plane's wing allows us to fly and fly all over the world. If you look at, you know, the 747s, the big planes, they have this, all have this shape of wing. If you look at some of the fighter jets or much faster jets out there, you might notice that their wings don't quite have the same shape. They're a little more sleek. And that's because they don't need as much of that distance to gain their lift because they're moving so much faster. They also need to be able to maneuver better in space. So they build the shape of their wings so they can actually fly in every single direction. They can fly upside down, they can fly sideways, they can fly straight up and straight down. By better understanding these forces of lift and understanding how this, this physical forces work around us, we can change anything we want to the point where we can create a plane that can do almost anything in the air. Now that you have a better understanding of Bernoulli's principle and the science behind flight, let's build some flying devices. Now, there are many, many ways to build different flying devices. I have a few right here, from this disc ring, to a double ring and a straw, to this, which acts more like a helicopter. There's many ways to build flying devices, and I want you to use your knowledge to try to come up with your own method of building flying devices. But for now, I wanna show you how to build the best paper airplane in the world. This paper airplane actually holds the record for the longest distance traveled. And it's really not that hard to make. All you need is a piece of paper. So let's go through how to actually build this. The best way to fold paper is, well, slowly and with a lot of practice. When you do this, you wanna make sure you try to make as clean of folds as you can. It's okay if you don't like your first crease because you can always readjust it and then crease it again. Once you've creased it though and you're happy with the fold, the way to lock it is using a nail. So you take your nail and you just it, run it across the edge of the paper. You're gonna open it back up and you're gonna make the same fold on the other side across an edge. Open that back up and you should see a big X on your paper. This is sort of your guide to the next steps. Next, you're gonna take the same first corner and you're gonna fold it to where it, this edge, this outside edge lines up with your crease line. Fold it and align it with the crease line. You're gonna do the same thing with the other side. This edge is gonna line up with your crease edge over here. Just takes practice. Now that you've done this, you're going to take the top and fold it down. I'm happy with this. I've got a full, nice, straight line on each side. Again, lock it in place. Next, you're actually gonna fold along this crease line from here through here. Now, since you've already made those folds, this one should be pretty easy. Just folds right in along your previously folded line. Now, do it again on this side, and you should see it forms a nice point at the front. And then you lock it in place, you keep throwing it. You're gonna take this flap and fold it up. You're gonna take your whole plane and you're gonna fold it over. So all the fold sides are now on the bottom and you're gonna fold this in half. Bring this part up and fold it in half. You want the back corners to line up better. I might line up my back corners and I crease it. You only have to make one more fold to make your wings. It's a little bit better if you pull this down a little bit farther until that triangle disappears. Fold it. Once again, you wanna go do the other side, match your wing folds. Good. Just like that. And now, my plane is ready. So one thing we can do that's, that usually makes your plane fly better is to take these edge wing tips. You don't wanna actually fold it, you just wanna sort of curl it. Now, if you think about lift and what lift does or what the air pressure does on this is once again, the air will be pushing here 
it'll hit these and cause it to fall back like this, giving your wings more air. This is just a glider. We pry the force and it glides through the air. Next step is you wanna sort of pull your wings up. You want a positive angle up with your wings, it'll glide better. Now that you've made your plane today, you can go outside, have fun, and throw it around. Go outside, observe that flight, better understand it, and as always, happy sciencing.